Hi, this is Lee Lightfoot, and you're listening to the Marvel Card Collector's Podcast. Hello everybody, my name is Ian Taylor, and welcome to the Marvel Card Collector's Podcast, brought to you by the Marvel Cards Fan Collective, an awesome community of card collectors and creators. You can find our two groups on Facebook, details of which are at the end of this podcast, so come check us out. With me is my co-pilot in all things Marvel Cards. He's the New Year resolution that will never be forgotten by the 1st of February. It's Norin Rad. You say the sweetest things. You know that? Like, I come on the podcast and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm feeling a little down today. I feel a little tired, maybe. And then you say stuff and my whole day is bright. And it's quite beautiful. I love waking you up. You are this. the sunshine of my life. Aw, oh, man. You know what made me cry? Cool. You ever seen the show Taxi? Yes. Right? Yes. That episode where um, Laka, I think is his name. The one Jim Carrey does the I know you want to. I know you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Misses his dad. Yes. Yeah, Andy Kaufman. He misses his dad in an episode, and the dad's like really heavy, and that's kind of like the gag, and he holds up the pants, and they're really big, and that song starts playing. I remember being a kid watching that, and I was crying my heart out. I don't know what happened, but it was a very sentimental episode. But there's my tangent for the episode. Wow. So we need to have a counter. So one just went off. So there's one tangent. So Done. we're segueing already. Um, happy New Year, everybody. Um, <laughs> or if you're listening to this and you're on catch up, happy June or whatever time of the year it is for you. Because um, it occurs to me that we, we do anchor these somewhat in um, when we record them. But obviously people don't listen to them at the time we record them, mainly because mm. it's usually a week or two before we release them. Um, so unless mm-hmm. we plan ahead, like the Christmas episode or the Halloween so halloween um, <laughs> we're so jonesing for the next one already aren't we? oh i'm already ready yeah we might have yeah. summer halloween or something like that i don't know so if this is your first episode um as greg on our sister podcast i i, I like to call him our sister podcast now because we are cut from the same cloth uh, rebel, the rebel base card podcast which is basically us but talking so about good. star wars uh trading cards um he says something cool on his episode uh, not that I'm going to steal from him, but I'm going to steal from him. Sorry, Greg. Um, right. He says, um, welcome uh, aboard. Um, if, if it's your first time, welcome aboard. He says something like that. So, or welcome back. So, But if this is your first episode and you don't know what we're talking about, then uh, we did a Halloween episode, which was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. It was. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but welcome. Um, so 2020. A new year. Did you have a wonderful <sighs> Christmas and New Year, sir? I did. It was lovely. Good. It was very quiet, very calming. Uh-huh. Um, it was a lot of resting and a lot of presents. My wife got me a telescope. A telescope? A telescope. Of all the things I expected you to say, I didn't expect you to say a telescope. I'm trying to keep it PG. Oh, okay. Telescope is the nice one. Oh, Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, she got me a telescope, which I am very much in love with. <laughs> I have a feeling um, I missed a joke there. <laughs> you did. It was bad. I shouldn't have said anything. Um, and then I got a Transformers Ghostbusters Echo 1 car, Oh. which I couldn't help it. It looked really cool. I mentioned it a long time ago, and then she remembered, and, and now... That's a wife for you. That's a she, good wife. She rocks. What about you? How was yours? You were in the States, good I was. Sir. I was in your homeland. Um, you were. And for a brief period, we were on the same time zone, but we didn't manage to record because it was, uh, I was all, holidays. Over the place. all over the Family place. stuff, yeah. Um, it was good. It was cold. I was in, we, we flew into Boston, and then we're in New Hampshire for a week, and we had to go back to Boston a day earlier because a storm came in and dropped um, eight to ten inches of ice and snow on their house. And oh my they gosh! I couldn't drive anywhere, so um, wow. so we went back to Boston a day early because uh, they very kindly drove us down, and oh, wow. um, so um, so that we'd missed the storm. And sure enough, if we'd gone on the day we planned to, we wouldn't have been able to make the journey back to Boston. So and therefore would have missed our flight. So um, so we had two days in Boston at the start of the holiday, two days in Boston at the end, um, and I had multiple multiple mail calls. Damn right while i was there some of which i've i've shared on group some of which i haven't because i just simply haven't had time uh, to do them so i guess the first thing is i'm just going to hold this up for you there oh it is gosh. baby so i'm holding up my marvel annual 2018 2019 black cat rainbow which i've put 
in a nine card sheet. So for those who don't know what a rainbow is, a rainbow is effectively every card um, in a series of cards made for a character in a set, effectively. Wow. Um, we'll talk about rainbows on another episode, but it's basically, you know, if there was a base card, then a, you know, a gold parallel, a blue parallel, a purple parallel, a printing plate, etc. It would be all of them. That that's a rainbow. Wow. So what we've got here is I've got all four printing plates that I've arranged on the sheet there, and then I've got the color wheel um, in the middle, which you had to get ten of the regular. SP. So already the base card is in SP. Then you had to get ten of those on e packs. Oh man, that middle one. You're so, a monster. So How did you to what fill the nine card sheet? So there's only actually two printed cards in the four printing plates. Um, mm. I've just filled out the nine card sheet with three more copies of the. It looks so good. But it like just it's, I really love clear. that arrangement. That's my favorite way to arrange a rainbow. In a Isn't it nice? Figure. So yeah. and I'll, put, I'll pop a picture of this on the, on the scans, folks, and hopefully you can, wow. you can be drooling on it and having to wipe the screen. I'm off. already drooling. Um, yeah. but I have it's a just, bucket it's under nice. my mouth. It's just oh, nice. Oh, man, it looks so good. It looks good in a page. Yeah, it's really nice. So. I think that's the only regret I have by holding my cards into top loaders. But, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'll hoik one of these out because I want you to see the shine on the borders. So this, was, this kind of leads into what we're going to be talking about shortly, just in terms of some of the quality. Oh, Look wow. What an effect. Yeah. So it's kind of got a, it's a glossy card for a start, but it's got a shiny border. So I'm looking at, I'm you know, holding up for Norin here. It's um, a Marvel Annual 2018, yes. 19. It's one of the SP cards. So that's numbers 101 to 150. Um, and it's card 127 in this case, but um, it's got a kind of a shiny silver border around it. And you can see the letter wow. is done like that as well. Those are actually a lot nicer than they appear yeah, it's on really the nice. I mean, it's a regular card thickness. So, you know, probably 25 point um, they got to use that like 3d kind of like nice. gif type of um thing they have in facebook on the yeah. because otherwise you can't see and it's got the upper deck hologram on the back as well i love that that always makes it for me but it's a really power nice, grid but it is mm. nice it's nicely produced really nice it's beautiful i think it's great um seriously so i think I it's top pleasantly end. surprised when i got that Pleasant I'm so surprise. glad you got all the printing plates too, man. That's such oh, like that was tough. that's it's such a good rich. calling card for a character collector. It's Hello, crazy. Card bill. Oh, uh, by the way, we pulled someone into being a character collector with us. Oh, go on. You ready? Go on. Pankit. He oh, is Pankit Shaw. Sure. Good evening, Pankit. The man. Uh, I won't say the character so we don't like jinx him because <laughs> well, he has to. I think like, everyone knows. I think I think some people because he's because he's, he was already going after it and he's been on he the was going after it. it. I just yeah. feel bad outing him, but it was uh, it's been pretty funny right. talking. Well, we'll to talk him. about that on the character um, episode. I just want to show you quick, very yes. quickly before we move on um, the color Coming. wheel. Yes, I want to color see wheel. So as well as having a different background on the character, the hollow is colored. It's, it's gold. Wow, it's gold border, and and so it basically wow. it's just really nice. So the light's not brilliant in here. Look at that. It's nice, isn't it? Really nice. Uh, honestly, that's one of my favorite images of Black Hat. So I think it's, I, yeah, I really, it's, really, 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 really like it. Who that is. Is that an art germ one? Looks like an art germ one, but I might be Adam, wrong. It's not Adam. You, you, uh, no. no, I, mean, I don't um, think it is. It's, it's apparently or, from, uh, well, the, the image they reference behind her on the, on the base card is from the Defenders. Um, mm -hmm. So there was a, there was a 10 issue. I think it was a Bendis series, actually. Um, ten issue mm. of Defenders um, that ran in 2018. Um, and they've lifted, the, on the back of it, they lift the cover of one of the issues where she's on the cover, but it's not that artwork. So I can only assume that's an inside or variant cover image. Interesting, yeah. But it's nice. Anyway, so I got that. Um, and it's I also pretty, got man. That's my, amazing. What, are they, what else did I get? I got the... So Fleer Ultra X-Men 2018. If you collected the nine card... Oh, I can't remember which one it is now. Um, there's a nine card subset that is done by um, Greg Hildebrandt. Good evening, Greg. Um, Greg. He says in the vain hope that you listen. Um, <laughs> the, and if you collected all nine cards you could get the achievement was a lithograph of that page. oh you told me yes wow. isn't that amazing and it comes in this really nice hard plastic kind of top really? of a big wow. yeah they ship it right at least 
Yeah, and it came in a massive box with loads of like these little styrene polystyrene beads oh good for and that. then in the middle of that box was a tiny little card box <laughs> just add the rest of the cards I really yeah oh wow that looks really good it's really clean it's lovely it's really nice ah that's a nice piece man so, you're gonna frame yeah. that that looks really good uh I, I may well do but for the fact that i want to be able to look at what it says on the back i know congratulations that's you have received a lithograph print of a greg hildebrandt painting that was commissioned for the 2018 clear ultra x-men set enjoy your print and those prints in and of themselves unless the artist makes them they don't exist no and you know that's prints, quite a rare thing for upper deck to make well actually, plus it's no, an achievement it's yeah. from upper deck and it's, it's nice. a litho it's really you sweet that. i love it that's, that's love really it. rare so happy with that lots of other stuff um very kindly um alan michael busted some old school marvel masterpieces series one from 1990 nice and he sent me some wrappers oh which is really wrappers are the best yeah so these are so would you consider that the first trading card uh it's i know that there were sets before that in the late kind of 80s and Mm -hmm. there was we talked before i think there was a set in the 60s um for me that's kind of when it started Mm -hmm. um like i said i think there were some comic images sets from the late 80s yeah, so uh, yeah. But Marvel Universe 1990 for, for, for a lot of people is where it kind of started. Um, yeah. And that is, you know, because that was the set that kind of kicked off Marvel. Well, Marvel that was the set two, to first have inserts. Marvel Masterpieces. First hologram. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Um, what else did I get? Uh, oh, I got, pre- I got the, so I got the rest of the, um, uh, where are they? Oh, they're not here. They're downstairs. Gutted. Gutted. I left them downstairs. Um, <laughs> I got the... Um, so from Marvel Angel 2018-19. I'm going to pause that because that's what I want to talk about later. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead no of worries. myself. No worries. Before we go any further, let me thank Namecheck and generally bow down in awe at yes. the artistry of Mr. Lee Lightfoot. Um, who is this, yeah. this, um, this episode's introduction. Uh, Lee, thank you for that. Um, Lee, as you may have noticed from his dulcet Northern English tones, um, is a UK-based artist. And um, he's been on um, at least three sets so far. Um, he's done, um, well, he says here, I've done multiple Marvel premieres, so I'm guessing that's at least 2017, 2019. I think um, so. He's done... Um, Joe just goes Marvel Masterpieces, so that's the 2016 set, and he's done Guardians of the Galaxy as well. Wow. Um, and if you go to his Instagram, which we'll pop in the tasting notes, but for those of you who are sat there ready and typing stuff in, um, that's not it because I've got it on the wrong window of my browser. Where is it? <laughs> um, it is over here. Um, he is sorry someone's beeping and i know this gets picked up on the audio so let me just it's, quickly i believe it's you no it is it is me it's it's, oh. it's it's messenger so let me just close that there we go um lee lightfoot on instagram at lee dot lightfoot um, which is a great surname actually um, yeah, i love that name Artists for tops, cryptozoic, etc. Paint, mm-hmm. ink, pencils, and sculpts for commissions or contract invites. Please Facebook me via the link shown. So I think Facebook is his primary thing, but he also does a does a an Instagram. Um, he's also got a Twitter uh, account, which is let me just find that at Blackship Books. Um, Blackship Books, all one word, and on Facebook.com forward slash Lightfoot dot art. Um, but his Instagram has got some cracking stuff on there. Um, the one that really caught my attention was a Marvel premiere cover recreation. It's just phenomenal. It's that's crazy. Um, and even uh, Hoi Truong, Tr- um, a friend of the podcast who was in Trail yeah. a few, a few uh, months back, uh, has commented, "This is super microscopic, incredible work, Lee." And what he's done on a, on a regular size, not a multi-panel, a regular size trading card um marvel premiere he's recreated the cover of a jim lee x-men extinction agenda with havoc Havoc. and he's managed to do the corner box detail with all the the faces it's tiny absolutely tiny yeah he's got the number he's got the little copyright he's got approved by the comic code gobsmacked it's just phenomenal work um it's very nice and it's so like 
That is so good. I mean, everything looks so clean on there. It's really nice, isn't it? Um, it's a great piece. And he's it really done, is. The top one at the moment on there is his. Um, he's done a little uh, Frozen two. One, that looks good. <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Uh, which is Anna Elsa and Kristoff. Just, I've just. Well, his portraits are just yeah. beyond outstanding. But if you look, there's a post here with a lot of his Marvel premiere work, and he's got yeah. He's got Tom Holland there. Um, Spidey with Mysterio and Nick Fury, which looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a, a gorgeous Marvel premiere card with Thanos. Mm-hmm. And um, Robert MCU Downey Jr. Depictions. Yeah, MCU depictions. He's got an MCU Downey Jr. there at the point of the snap. No spoilers, mm-hmm. but if you haven't seen it by now, what, what have you been doing? And he's got Fair. one that, that really does include, again, at regular trading card size, Almost all of the MCU characters from Endgame. Yeah, poster stacking. So, like, he's stacking heads. He's very good at, like, composition and everything like that. Great I mean, at framing. I mean, just, just really phenomenal. nice stuff. And the color is clean. I mean, the color is yeah. so... And he says here in the, in the, um, in the um, hashtags, acrylic painting. So, that's Oof. incredible. We have a lot of fans of people who... Yeah. Of, uh, are fans of artists who do uh, paints, yeah. mostly. Um, That's crazy. If you look on here, he's got some incredible Walking Dead and Star Wars um, cards showing as well. He's done some brilliant Walking Dead stuff. Um, he's There's an amazing you, Walking Dead one with um, Ezekiel and his oh, tiger, yeah. Shiva. Look at that. That's a regular size trading card. And that looks good. There's a tiger that Joe Drisco, uh, good evening, Joe, would, would be... Oh yeah, proud to to recommend because I'm I'm sure not meant to take words out of your, <laughs> out of your mouth, Joe. But Joe um, is a fan of 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 nature and artists mm-hmm. like that because he often paints stuff for Conan and Tarzan. He paints tigers and gorillas and things. Yeah. Like that. Um, but that, yeah, that that tiger is pretty good to my eyes. Wow. Um, His and, scale yeah. is it's funny because like some artists can't do can't match the scaling so they can't go from trading card to like bigger pieces or they can go from bigger pieces yeah. but not to trading cards it's crazy to see that he has the range of doing both because he's there a lot a lot on his instagram are blank comic books yeah. and as well as the sketch cards so i mean scaling for this artist is no problem whatsoever i'm just looking at the walking dead sketch cards i've got on my screen at the moment and those great. are just stunning i mean the a's nailed it i mean the one of the governor is it's just phenomenal um, really good. one there of merle dixon well his lighting is michael rooker amazing just, yeah and and daryl of course yeah it's just it's just top-notch stuff really top-notch so lee thank you for that um well, um, we'll obviously pop all the stuff on the tasting notes. Seriously, go and check him out. Um, if you've got some blank covers you need filling up, um, he would certainly do them. Look at his black and white work. Wow. He's got some Stargate stuff here. Ooh. And some Harry Potter. Very photorealistic. That's nice. Yeah, it's really nice stuff. So, yeah, check and him out. Yeah. He's a, he's a dude. Oh, look at that Venom. Oh, he's got a Tom Hardy... Um, Venom I've seen that card. I follow him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is That's great. good. That's good. So, Lee, thank you very much. Um, uh, we're honoured to have you on board uh, for this. That's that's just... Oh, he's done some Star Trek. Oh. Mm-hmm. I love Star Trek. There's some nice process stuff from his incredible hot cover. Beautiful stuff. So, yeah. Thank you, Lee. Um, thank you. So, as this is our first episode of the new year, we are going to do a little roundup of last year 2819 round up and we're also going to look ahead to 2020 because there's some exciting stuff coming up um oh. so i want to talk about 2019 i'm going to start where i left off just now with marvel annual 2018-19 which um so there was a marvel annual 2016 then there's a marvel annual 2017 and then there was one they, they covered two years with it so i don't know if they'll not have it this year and then release one that says 1920 and 2020 or if they'll have one this year i don't know know. um but there was there was plenty in it and i wasn't going to touch marvel annual and then pack wars came along and it actually made it really affordable to collect um which was which was pretty neat and we had a little play with that didn't we We say again we had a little go on pack wars didn't we we did an episode we did it was really fun and we did like i really enjoyed it yeah, it was fun. Um, I got a kick out of it. 
it was well a lot of people got a kick out of it a lot of people spent an awful lot of money on it um trying to chase those weekly um i think i've mentioned this on previous episodes um there was a weekly incentive that you could get if you're in the top 100 score and you didn't have to do much to get in the top 100 you only had to win about five or six battles and you would get a character achievement um and that was limited to 100 cards and it was numbered so that is what i left downstairs i've got all 13 of the marvel annual pack wars weekly character achievements downstairs because i just had them shipped i thought i can't because i've got hundreds of cards in my epax account to have shipped to me i thought i can't possibly have them all shipped to me because i couldn't afford to i'll just <laughs> ship the ones i really want to get in hand yeah so i obviously i, t- I shipped out the liver graph i shipped out the Fleer ultra spider-man coin and auto cards i've got i've only got a few of them um i shipped out the whole Fleer ultra x-men master of magnetism set mm. which is 15 cards they're metal they're that's metal cards so cool. they're incredible they're so heavy i mean they're really heavy that's so cool. cards. um and they're thick well not 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 um uh flare ultra spider-man or x-men thick or marvel masterpiece is thick but they're thick cards thicker and than a then, printing plate then yeah yeah it's, it's, it's thicker than printing plate wow it's probably same size as a marvel flare card from the 90s that kind of fitness. That's a uh, good one. Point. That's a yeah, nice it's, weight. It's I like chunky. that weight. If I hit you on the forehead with it, you'd know about it. See, that's good. That's yeah. what I like. If I'm not in fear of my cards falling on me and me getting concussion, I'm not collecting them. Like, that's the line for me. If the Master of Magnetism 15 card set fell on you, you would be in the A&E for a concussion. That's it. I'm happy. Like See, I'm, I'm going to collect it. It's there you okay. go. Um, they're, they're they're lovely. They're really nice. Um, no, I love them. Get shipped. I've got a few other things shipped. Anyway, I'm I'm off on a tangent. So I got my Pack Wars cards shipped to me. Um, now Pack Wars, I think I, I think a lot of people maybe wouldn't have collected Marvel Annual 2018, 2019 were it not for Pack Wars, because in Pack Wars, you very very quickly accumulated the digital base, and the digital base you had to have ten of to get a color wheel version of that digital base. Now Marvel Annual 2018-2019 was very much on the trend of what Upper Deck are doing now in that you could get some of the cards only in the physical release. So the actual base cards Hmm. you couldn't get on EPACs. You'd get digital copies of them that you could combine 10 for to get a color wheel variant of it. But if I want the actual regular base cards, 1 to 100, I have to buy the retail product in stores. Oh, interesting. So, you, you know, you can't do that. So, um, right. so and also on EPAX, you could only get those character achievements on EPAX from playing Pack Wars. And you could also only get the printing plates from playing Pack Wars. They weren't released in the uh, physical boxes or in the regular packs and boxes that you buy. So you can still go and buy Marvel Annual now, right. 2018, 2019 on EPAX. But the Pack Wars only ran for a certain number of time until they kind of ran out of all those wins and incentives. Yes. Um, wow. Now that ran out quite quickly. Um, I remember people looking at it around week 10 and seeing that they had, um, you can see on the achievements that it goes further ahead and you could see they had up to, I think they had up to 20 weekly character achievements there and numbers 11 to 20 were listed as um, not yet released or not yet available. And all of a sudden that got reduced and it said, okay, this is the last week we're doing it. And only three days into that last week, it sold out. So that weekly achievement card 13 is really scarce. It's wow. really tough to get because they didn't issue all a hundred of them because not everyone had played. Even if you'd bought packs, um, I don't think you could then play them. It wow. Did. So if you'd bought packs of Pack Wars and hadn't played them, I think you, I think you maybe had a very small window to play them, and then they took Pack Wars off the site because it, it went really quick. I mean, it went furiously quick. And I think they were actually a little bit um, – I'm speculating here, but I think Upper Deck were a little bit surprised at the actual rate of play and the rate of wins. I feel like they were because like, people went ham for it. They, they went, went really ham. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, uh, yeah, I just find it really uh, interesting. Wow. I love the pace in which these things are selling out. I mean, I'm very interested to see, speaking about 2020 and 
thinking back and all this stuff, you know, some of the crazier pieces like Marvel masterpieces and, you know, like, are you, do you think eventually we're moving towards more product being digital only? I mean, digital only in the sense that we won't see them in hobby stores. We'll see maybe one or two boxes in hobby stores, but most of the product will be released online. I think that's where Upper Deck will do it. I think Upper Deck have realized that, again, this is just speculation. This is my my take on it. But I think Upper Deck have realized that they cannot completely exclude the physical market, uh, which is why some of the stuff is still only available in the physical market. Right. Um, There's an awful lot of sports product they put out, and those sports vendors also buy in the non-sport stuff Mm -hmm. as i find um beyond that i don't don't, you know i think it costs them less obviously in distribution they don't have to make i would think so although that cost is probably fairly negligible um there's the distribution of them um i think it's just simply more cost effective for them to make something whereby when you're buying a pack on the on the epacs platform if the majority of cards in that are digital and you have to combine them to then get a physical, of course it's going to cost them less. They're going to make more money selling something that technically doesn't physically exist. Yeah. Um, which was the whole, you know, resistance I had for getting into buying music off iTunes. <laughs> right. For the longest time, I, w- I wouldn't, you know, I just, I, I wanted to tangibly hold it. And for a lot of people, that's not an issue. They don't mind. You know, they don't mind that the, the song exists in the cloud somewhere and it, they don't actually, they're not able to pick up a copy of it. Right. Um, but for me, you know, for, for a lot of card collectors, they do want the physical product. Um, so I think Upper Deck are doing an interesting balance between between it. So even if you do get stuff that's digital, everything is, is a stepping stone to getting a physical copy. Yeah. Um, price I think points, so. I think, I think price points, they're, they're nudging a little bit higher on some of the things. But um, uh, Flare is a prime example. So Marvel Flare... Obviously came out um, in 2019. This is again. It was their um, upper deck. Tend to do these retro or throwback re- revitalizations of. Is that a word? Revitalization. I uh, we're making a word now. It is now. It is it now. It is now. We've Sounds done like it. a good word. Sounds I like the kind so. of word I'd make up. So I'm going to I'm going to go with it. Um, <laughs> revisitation. No, that's the free ghost of Christmas. We're past Christmas. January. Um, <laughs> the. When they when they throw back retro sets anyway, retro sets. where they bring back brands that were popular. So they've done it with Fleer Ultra Spider Man. They've done it with Fleer Ultra X Men. Obviously, masterpieces. They've done it in a hugely successful way. So much so they've done it twice. Yes, third time's the charm. We'll come on to that. Um, oh, yeah, and yeah, I know you're Jones in boy, but let's get. To I'm Jones. I'm good, way. man. I'm solid. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad you're sat down. <laughs> 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 um marvel flare 2019 was mm, i think people were mixed about it fair to safe to say when it came out you busted a box yes what all about i did i did i liked flare i thought flare was nice mm. so i'm just finishing my tea i was hoping you'd, have, you'd have a longer sentence there i can um, i can longer sentence it up yes you can longer sentence it up well i have here <laughs> this was something in my mail call that i purchased oh. again off alan michael so what I've got here is the physical base set cards one to ninety of Marvel Flare. Oh wow! So that I that I had shipped to me. Now the reason I bought this physical base set from Alan. Uh, good evening, sir. Alan. Um, um, Alan's a dude. He's got some. He really is a creative dude. chap as well. I've seen some of the stuff that he makes on his Instagram feed and. Um, yeah, he's, he's a, great. He's a clever guy. Um, famous for doing uh, an on Facebook box break of him on yes. video dressed as Wolverine while he did the break the box. And he kept he's the best. a remarkable amount of time. He had to take the claws off. But, uh, but apart from that. Um, the best. So, so Marvel Flare was base cards 1 to 90. And then you had uh, six tiers of Flarium. So you had Flarium Tier 1, which was 91 to 100, Tier 2, 101 to 110, etc., up to 150. Tier 6 being really, really tough to get. Um, and they're moving for a fair bit of money on, on um, ComC and eBay as well. So yeah. now it was all original, f- fully painted artwork from a multitude of artists, including a uh, friend of the show, uh, Dave DeVries, 
Dave. Uh, <laughs> Megan Hetrick. Uh, good evening, Megan. Yeah. Um, who else was on there? I mean, who wasn't on there? Let's let's face it. There were a lot of Absolutely. really talented artists. Top I mean, the whole artists on there. Uh, yeah. Tom Fleming was on there. Yeah. Um, we had um, Peach Momoko, of course, uh, mm-hmm. also a friend of the um, uh, podcast, um, Ar- Arigato uh, Peach. Uh, we had Sean Cheeks Galloway. We had Jonathan Wayshack. My goodness, his stuff is good. Look at that Sentry card. Can you see that? Oh, the light's terrible in here. You can't really see that, can you? I have seen it, though. It's yeah, so nice. It. The Flareums are there you go. so good. So anyway, I also had um, Flareum uh, Tier 1 sent to me from... Uh, oh that's nice peach momoko as well oh my goodness they're just they're just divine cards peach uh, momoko is actually my favorite uh Ian, geist, Ian geist. geist great jim yeah. there's his man thing. His last name jim oh, i love that man thing i'm showing you em geist's man actually i won't weird. say who but i just spoke to someone who got to the original art oh, for wow. that piece yeah i won't say who but it's definitely it it's, looks really it's, good it's brilliant it's it really good. Actually, my favorite card in the set. So there are two cards of my favorites for Flare. Cool. The first one, well, the artist, oh, what's the, I, I just, I just blanked on the name. Um, the Anti-Venom oh, in, um, in the set. Um, I tried contacting the artist because I was actually thinking about getting the artwork. Um, I'm going to look it up while you talk. You keep talking. Yeah, I'll look it. but Anti-Venom is really good. I, I really love that card. I pulled that card. Uh, when I bought my box, which was really fun because I'm absolutely in love with it. Anything that's creepy and has a moon in it and all that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> fun um, and then the other one was Ghost from Ant-Man. Oh. And it was from the same artist. And I love those. I just got the gold border for Ghost and I'm working on getting the gold border for Anti-Venom. Uh, but uh, Nicholas guys, Gregory. That, I think that's it. That's that it. Must yeah, be yeah. it. Ah, so good. So good. He's not an artist um, I've heard of, actually. So we've got to no. get. I invited him to the group. Ray Largo was on the set. Ray, Ray Largo's good great. evening, Ray. Ray, yeah. um, uh, cow, cow. Sorry, I keep murdering Cow's your name. Amazing. Ariel Olivetti, Bill Sinkevich, um, German Ponce, which is a superb name. Um, Ian, one of my favorite cards, the Megan Hedick, um Angela. Oh yes, so autograph. Great. Yeah, I pulled the autograph parallel. Oh, your God. and um it was just like happy party. christmas there you go uh, you're the best <laughs> you the are the best the, the thing that i wanted to get you that was that was your that was your christmas gift you're the best <laughs> um so john stanko i mean some of these guys and girls we really need to to um I'd love to get them all on yeah i mean there's a, there's a roster anyway so it's fully painted artwork but again with uh the physical release and the epax release mm-hmm. the reason i bought the base set from alan is because you can't get the base set on epax you get a digital copy of it which you have to combine five of to get a gold parallel uh version of the base set yeah. one to 90 so um so again that's that's upper deck doing different things in the physical release and the epax release so basically you making sure you have to double dip yeah which is you know which is you know a revenue raise i guess they know the audience because people are doing it um the other interesting thing with alpha flare is it had such um such a variety and i wouldn't say they necessarily all sit together well of of chase sets and i think this has been the criticism from a lot of people is that it doesn't feel like a cohesive set there's there's been quite a lot of stuff tried within marvel flare some of which i think people find work and some of which is less appealing to people um each of those levels of chase have kind of commons as it were sp and ssp so in 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 different levels of rarity which i think is is tricky for people to collect it it slight makes slightly more sense on epax because when you complete one of those so for example one of the subsets is flare matter there's 20 regular ones there's 10 short print there's five super short print ssps and for each completing each of those you get an achievement card and you can only get those achievement cards if you um buy the set through epac so for a lot of people it makes more sense to get the set for epac yeah it's driving people where upper deck want them effectively mm-hmm. and in a sense it is driving people away from the physical product to a degree yeah. um however they're still trying to incentivize the physical product by 
making the base set only available through it so it's kind of they're clearly trying to keep a foot in both markets but with a with a leaning towards epac um, yeah. which is it, interesting yeah, it really um is. so i think some people dig different aspects of the sets um the the ones that i find on epacs people are really going for are the sketch um sorry sketch cards are always popular are the stained glass ones People are what really is that by the way high. people people i've gotten so many trades i pulled yeah. that uh, short print spider-man yeah which is um, spoken for but like i had so many trades for those guys yeah you will they look great in it's, person yeah i think i think they're 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 a tougher pull just to get any stained glass i think the ratio is 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 harder on them even for the regular ones um and the stained glass photo variants, I think they're limited. I think they're very limited. Yeah, they're very limited. Cards. They're very, very, um, very limited. And the short print ones. So um, they're very, very difficult to get. Um, the other ones that are really difficult to get are a, a chase set, um, Lucky Eights, um, yes. the Jade yeah, and the Gold. And the, I again, I think, speak one. Yeah, I think there's only eight of, of them. I think so. So, um, which is why I guess <laughs> Lucky Eight. You're lucky if you pull. Yeah, lucky uh, at all. You're lucky if you get the other seven. So yeah. some people, some people are chasing those. Uh, I've inadvertently managed to get, and you'll see this when I open my, because you're looking at my screen, my checklist. Yes. So I've the matter. So there's there's two sets. There's matter and there's antimatter. Wow. Yes, um, the counterpart. So and I've completed the base matter. You can see there. I've got all but two of the flare matter short print, and all but one of the flare matter super short print. So I've got one of the three achievements there. Antimatter, wow. I've completed the base, which is only five of them because it does the flip side. So oh, there's only yeah. five regular, whereas there's 20 regular on the um, other ones. So there's still 10 short print, but there's 20 SSP antimatter. So that's a tough one to build. That um, is a tough one to build. But I've done the SP and the, S, um, and the regular on that. So I've got those two achievements. Um, pieces wow. of flair are the kind of manufactured patch cards, which I've actually got physically. But I'm only I'm only going for it on EPAC so I can get the achievements. Right. So I'm quite glad I didn't get any of the other stuff physically. Um, and I'm getting there on that, you know, so you're getting there. But it is one of these sets, you kind of choose which of the inserts you want. So in that sense, although it doesn't hang together as a whole, you can kind of choose which parts of it you want to collect. Yep. Um, the one I think that very few people are going for and remains and is certainly the view of myself. I don't know what you think, but I think is a, is a major uh, design misstep is the totems. The totems yeah, um, don't work. They, they don't, don't work. work at all. I mean, I, I get what they were trying to do there, and it's a good idea. Um, it was a good idea to mess with the physicality of it yeah. because you know what set really did well with the physicality. It wasn't you couldn't. It wasn't a stackable looking type of thing. But QFX back in the day in 1997, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, those cutouts and those kind of like pieces. And Flare Retro did one as well for the TI mm -hmm. set, set insert. Um, cutouts are really nice yeah but when you start putting cutouts that are going to connect to each other you're neglecting and collectors and stack you're looking yeah. at collect you're neglecting the collector you're neglecting 100 percent collectors at that point because every collector puts their collection safely in storage yeah you know what i mean they're top loaders or they're doing pages yeah and in pages that effect doesn't come off yeah in nine card page sleeves you know that it just doesn't come off so it doesn't look great and the texture in my opinion is not interesting enough mm. to warrant the design mm. unfortunately yeah i mean i can imagine the meeting you know you know for kids and, you know, it makes sense it's i great. think it's a good yeah. idea but you're not selling these to kids you no. know what i mean like you're really not and it's not that cheap of a product not these price points no not these not price. like not this is something if this is at target like for instance since we started talking to greg about star wars and stuff like that right like i'm really understanding the difference in tops and upper deck in terms of yeah. approach you know if there's a marvel box in target that a kid can pick up a pack 100 percent, the totems would be a good idea yeah that's a great fun the thing upper deck have. don't distribute target so there's no well, they won't, they won't reason. Reason. i don't know so why walmart they target choose, you know yeah, they, they choose not to the price point's not there for that yeah. those boxes of star wars cards which are 10 packs are like 20 dollars or something mm. like that you know, they, they just don't have that for Marvel. So that yeah. insert is not going to yeah, yeah, yeah. appeal to many people. It's, it's you know, but listen, hats off Upper Deck for trying it. I think it was, an, it was a cool attempt. And I, I, I like that product, you're trying I new stuff. Cool. Yeah. 100%. I like that you're trying new stuff. But, 100%. But you really, Flare 2019 for me just felt like you threw 
everything and the kitchen sink into this made it an, an almost impossibly large set to go for. If it you was a lot of go for the yeah. whole thing, and um, it some something about it feels a bit of a ca- feels like it's a bit of a cash grab this one, because they also did Power Blast, which are great inserts and rare inserts, but there's a completely different set of them on Epacs than there are to the physical boxes. That's not so, that's not for me as a collector. That's a little misleading. Yeah, because that you know you're forcing me into a product now. Yeah, it just it just feels it feels. Just feels like a cynical revenue raise. Yeah, agreed. Um, so I'm, which I know you know we're not forced to buy these things. You know, <laughs> we we right. you know, it's no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hobby thing. So I guess I shouldn't shouldn't moan given how much we spent on Marvel Weekly, which I'll come on to in a moment. But <laughs> um, but I think there's there's a point where you understand yes, the collector will spend a certain amount on a product, but there's a certain amount there's a certain point where the collector just feels maybe a bit. not taking advantage of that's the wrong word but but just a bit overwhelmed i think i think so too i think i think you i think the most successful card releases in terms of sets like for instance you know since this is a retrospect right looking at marvel masterpiece uh 2018 Mm -hmm. i think for me if we had to have a category for like best inserts um done in the last year or so or whatever the overlap is for me it's the preliminary art sketch yeah. um inserts that were in yeah. uh, mm 2018 like it's for really me interesting, isn't it? that's been for me as personal right my own bias yeah the insert that's really got me interested it are is that yeah because that for me is like wow i get to see the behind the scenes type of thing of this and art can you imagine seeing the rough versions of all of these flare artworks like that would be amazing. Like that's that a great would be a superb insert. insert. You know? Everybody would flip out because and that's that, so cool. You know, so you know, that kind of you can still, you know, you can still make that something that can, you know, hit your bottom line and tick, you know, make you profitable as a company and do that. Right. But but it's more interesting for people to go after. I think if you try and you know just 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 rein it in a tiny bit. I would I, I would be my advice on that. So you know I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's flair, you know, in hand, lovely. Uh, the base set, really nice. Um, love it. Uh, really pleased with it. Um, pieces of flair in hand, lovely. Um, I've also <laughs> got an, another empty box which Alan Michael ships the um, Ooh, nice um, Marvel Universe um, things in. So I've got got that, which is nice. So I'm a sucker for an empty box in a pack. So good. And I've also got one of the Power Blast, oh, it's the Black Cat one. Finally got it in oh, hand, um, which is nice. still in there. I but, really love that card, by the way. Yeah, I'm we, weirdly. I'm not fully in love with it. I've got it because it's black cat, but oh, I'm she just looks not so cool. No way. Yeah, You're not I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not so much into the art on that uh, particular style. Something it's it's bored. It's it, it veers slightly onto the cartoony for me. I see. I think I see that's why. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and also Spidey's in the background. I love that you don't like that. That makes me so giddy. I just get, I just get jealous. I want, I oh, want to to myself. You're my hero. Please, please. I love that so much. You know that, right? I love yeah. that you do that. That uh, cracks me up to no end. <laughs> uh, what else came out? Right, let's move on. Let's move on to Marvel Weekly then. Oh. Marvel Weekly was... I won't Epic. lie to you. It was expensive. It wasn't a big set. So that's no. the one thing I do like about it. Um, it is um, however many weeks. It's 36 base cards because mm-hmm. it ran for 36 weeks, ran from April to December. Finished on the 23rd, I think. It was the Monday of that week. So whatever day of the week that was, let me have a look. Yes, it was 23rd was the final day. Um, it was released on a Monday every week for <laughs> 36 weeks, hence Marvel Weekly. Yeah, we talked about it before. It was on our third episode, I think, or second episode. I can't remember. I think so. Um, we've, we, yeah, and we've touched on it. You know, it's been a journey that I've gone on. Um, it's um, so I haven't got any of the cards in hand. I didn't get any of those shipped to me because um, I needed them to stay in the EPAC system to be able to get the achievements at the end. Um, right. But I do have so each each uh, four week cycle. Obviously, you had four base cards. You had eight. Uh, comic clash cards um two a week so you had one base and two cc cards a week 
and then you had um, in each four week cycle you had the negative variant of the first yep. card that was in that weekly thing so that's cards minus one through minus nine because there were nine weekly cycles nine times four because 36 brilliant people are learning stuff the <laughs> table um it was um it was it was painful i won't lie to you uh, <laughs> simply because it was stressful buying because they sold out so quick i think the first week took um about an hour and 20 they just, just gone an hour and yeah. then from about week three, or four, I think week three was 20 minutes. From week four onwards, it was less than five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go. Now, yeah. you had to have another Marvel product in your basket to be even able to buy them. So you're already having to pay more than just the cost of the Marvel Weekly to get them. Um, and it was, I mean, I've just got the, sk- uh, the checklist up on my sc- screen. And look how... I'm looking at it now. It is. I mean, it's a, you've got 36 base, nine negative variants, 72 comic clash, and then each four-week cycle, you had an achievement for the for the collecting each of the four uh, base cards. So you've got nine of those. So it is pretty nice. It is all nine. Yeah. You know? So it's it's very satisfying for me. I can't wait to get it in a binder. And it it's won't be a thick so binder. Cool. It's going to look nice. I'm, I can probably lift some images and make myself a, a spine or or a front cover. To I'm happy to do that for you. Binder. Oh, bless you. Thank you. That'd be nice. Of course. Um, and then when you finished it, you could combine all of the achievements that you got for getting every four chunk of four base cards so all those achievements you redeem those for you could chase and you would get a captain america frozen in time achievement wow that's which so is cool. actually an acetate card so if i put so it up on screen what is that? So it's yeah. uh, basically plastic you know the uh, oh, kind of plastic seafury ones. Right. That's right. That's, that's, that's that's so it's like that, and it's kind of a uh, to get off that frosty kind of effect. It's nice, isn't it? It's like that. It is. So it's like nice. stacks on clear. Yeah, I couldn't the, tell actually. that from yeah. the image. Yeah, I wasn't sure as well. Um, so there's wow. that one, and then the other one, the other frozen in time achievement you got uh, was Iron Man. You got from getting all seventy two comic clash cards. Wow. Okay. And the Iron Man, we'll get a picture of that one's great. We'll put these on the tasting notes, folks. It's just yes. nice to talk about it while we're, while we're looking at it. So there's the Iron Man one. It's nice. I like the Iron Man one. Yeah, it's nice. It's all right. I like it. Now, you see most of these are redeemed. Yeah. I'm looking on the marketplace. In fact, pretty much all of them are. In fact, wow. every single one is redeemed. And the reason being is because once you got both of those achievements, you could then redeem those for... A sketch card achievement by one of 10 artists. Now, originally, it was, I think, a lot of people were under the impression that it was just going to be Mitch Ballard. Um, I think other artists got added into the mix. Don't know why. There was some grumblings on the EPAX form about that because, you know, everyone's madly in love with Mitch Ballard uh, on there, but justifiably so. Um, there's a lot of his product out there and it is top notch. Um, and, but you had David Hindlang, who's great. Really good artist, uh, Ricardo Riccardi Vincenzo, mm. um, who actually, I'm going to tell you this now, because um, um, I was emailing him this morning. It's actually Vincenzo Riccardi. They put it as Riccardi Vincenzo. So, um, so he actually calls himself Vin. <laughs> so Vincenzo is his first name. Okay. Um, but I mean, um, but uh, no, I think it's some. Um, we had it with another artist. Um, Achilles Kokinakis. It's always displayed oh, as Kokinakis yes. and uh, Achilles because um, in some countries and cultures, the surname goes first. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, so when you're mailing someone, it would always be sent to um, Kokinakis Achilles. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so, um, but um, it is actually Achilles Kokinakis. So who is your yeah, favorite? Anyway. Well, um, uh, let's let's have a look at some of them on the screen because yes, we've still got I'm to do a preview of 2020. But let's have a look. So Ricardo, so Vincenzo Riccardi. Yes, I love his stuff. Um, yeah. Someone in the group pulled that pulled that red skull. Um, he's still got it. In fact, Sean Lee, um, he was happy with that. Uh, you've Great got a card. few here. You got some. Really, it's, it's nice. It's really nice stuff. Um, well, we will have. So we'll talk about his stuff more on a future episode. But um, yeah, yeah, his his cards are really really they got a nice movement to them nice i think they're great them. i love the color I love the coloring. yeah i love it all i think it's um, oh it's my favorite for sure hands down. Stuff. uh Hindlang, ivan rodriguez uh an artist who simply goes by the name of othel 
Uh, Michael Mastermaker, who uh, Nick Justice, Nick Nixon, mm-hmm. um, Mitch Ballard, of course, uh, Free Isabella. Mm. One of these days they will free Isabella. <laughs> Sorry, um, Free Isabella. <laughs> Isabella. I'm not sure if Isabella is actually your maybe your first name and your surname is Free. I don't know. It might be one of those gigs, but I think it's a really interesting name. Um, Alfred Alfredo Lopez Jr. and William Britton Jr. Um, some of these artists I'm not familiar with, but and I won't go through all of those now, but Mitch right. Ballard. So I collected two sets of Marvel. That's Wicked. right. Crazily enough, and I don't know why I decided to do that. I decided to do it fairly early on. Um, and in the end, I did redeem both for Sketch Card Achievement. And I got two Mitch Ballards. So I was lucky on that because a lot of people did. You got very lucky. Um, in fact, let me see. In fact, yes, there's one of them. There's the Spidey I got. Uh, yeah. which is currently held by this 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 chap here. Um, I can't remember if I traded it to him or if he then acquired it. Uh, that's the other one, the name all there. So those are the two I got. Um, and I can't believe are, you got both of them. They are what really clean. I mean, they're very different to the other ones that are still showing. Yeah, I, I, I love so I think there's a lot the, uh, that are locked. But he's fact. chosen to go with that circular effect, very similar to the one that um, Charles Cody had. Yes, um, MM twenty eighteen. It just I'll looks pop, so clean. I'll pop the pictures of those up as well. Um, I don't own, own them anymore, but I was very I was very clear on this that when I pulled them, I wanted to trade them for Black Cat sketches. Yeah, um, and ideally for one from Marvel Weekly. Now I haven't seen any Black Cat sketches from Marvel Weekly from any of the artists, no. and I looked. No. It's possible that someone got one and then locked it. So it, it may yeah. be that there was there was some done, but I, I was looking on the day as as it was happening as people were getting them, and I didn't see any. So, so in the end, um, and I got a lot of offers on these for a lot of good stuff. I would uh, think but so, I, but I did hold firm, um, and I did eventually trade them, and I will show you the cards that I traded. So a couple of them I got multiple sketches for. Good, um, I would hope so, which is good. But it included a black cat, so um, mm-hmm. and none of them from. So the ones I got were. Oh wow! This black cat here, which is, um, if I click on it, where's the, there we go. So this one, which was from 2019 Marvel Flare, which is quite a simple one. I like it. Yes, but I wanted one from Flare, and it's by Jose Ventura. Oh, nice! Very cool. Just, yeah, it's nice. I just like the, the the style of it. I, I think it's nice. I like I like the colors, man. I like the purple. Yeah. I like it all. So there's that one, and I'll, again, I'll put pictures up. So I've got a black cat sketch from, and I've got another one mm-hmm. in another trade from. Uh, 2018 Marvel Masterpieces, and it's by Remy Isu Mokhtar, who's been around for a while, this, this guy. I like that one a lot. So, so basically, both of the cards I traded for that Black Cat sketch plus other cards. So I actually, got, awesome. I actually got a number of sketches that I'm now, you know, I can now use to trade for other things. So for me, right. I got what I wanted out of it. I think the base cards and the, the chase cards actually look really nice on screen. And when I've I think so too. Them in hand, they're nice. So it'll be a nice, satisfying set. Would I do Marvel Weekly again? Absolutely not. Really? Absolutely not. I would not go through it. It's it's the having to be. It caused me, you know, because I was at work at five pm uh-huh. in the UK. So you know, I, it caused me a few tricky bits. There was a couple of weeks where the site crashed, and it was just really stressful to do it. Yeah. And the penultimate week of it, week thirty five. It crashed when it was going through, and very few people who'd been buying it through the whole thing actually managed to get their product. Wow. And a couple of um, users very, very quickly ended up with a lot of cards showing in their account. So there is some speculation on the EPACs forum, or there certainly, certainly was at the time, that there had been um, some people using bots to make bulk purchases, which obviously overwhelms the site. And, you know, um, because how else could you explain someone getting so many cards so quickly? Because, it's you know, it takes a certain amount of time to go through the payment process. Wow! You, even if you had multiple accounts and had multiple browser windows open, you would still have multiple click screens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only way to kind of explain it, and I've seen it happen in ticketing, is is uh, people using an automated process, otherwise known as a bot, to actually do the purchase. Um, so a lot of people called BS on the forum. Um, uh, I'm just going to read out one of the comments on the EPACS forum. Now, the EPACS forum isn't, structured in a way that you can go back and look at things very easily so i took a screenshot and someone said 
after last week, shut out inside of three or four minutes. I look right then, and there's a dude with 40 base cards. So this is after three or four minutes. That That's wouldn't be possible. That's crazy. Okay? I emailed UD about it, and they said he must have ordered multiple times. That's full-on BS. Dude has 40 base. There's no fucking, So there's there, is no clear, way. there was clearly some abuse of it. And because of that, it was, um, it was very difficult for a lot of people to, to actually complete. Because week 35, a lot of people who'd been buying, and a lot of people made multiple sets in order to get multiple sketches. So I was just doing two. Some people were going off to 10. You know, um, we, like it or not, if sketches were your aim and you wanted multiple sketches and multiple chances to get sketches. I guess by that's the artists, way to do it, yeah. You know, it, it is what it is. You could buy up to 10 packs a week on any single user account. And the time it took for them to sell out, you wouldn't have time necessarily to loop back and do a second purchase time no, you, you before it sold out because it takes yeah. a while to go through. So there's a lot of speculation on that. Um, what's true and what isn't, I don't know. But a lot of people are left, left feeling a bit, a bit peeved by it. There's a lot of people who still haven't managed to get all of that week 35 stuff. Um, and a lot of people kind of held them hostage so that people would overtrade for them. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I didn't actively do that. I, I happened to have a few spare for that week because I was lucky. Yeah. I was lucky enough that I managed to get a, a transaction through. Yeah. It was only in the minutes afterwards when I was trying to lock stuff and trade it that I realized the site had gone down. I mean, I mean the, the whole EPAC site went down for about 20 minutes. Um, I remember they had to reboot it because stuff disappeared from people's, you know, offers things oh, and stuff, you know, but, uh, they clearly hit a reset button. So, um, so from a user, user experience, from a UX point of view, it was deeply frustrating and actually yeah. quite expensive to get those, you know, in the same way that pack halls were, people were buying multiple stuff just to get sketches. They could have probably bought on eBay for 80 quid. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, you know, it's, it's I'd be like, interested yeah. to see where prices go. Yeah, in the aftermarket for these things, to be well, honest. Well, there are some sketches from Marvel Weekly on ComC, and I was looking. Are they really? Yeah, um, not many, but some people have moved them on there. Um, let's just type it in because I meant to have this up. I've got it up on my phone browser, but uh, ComC. Why did it, it, it Google? I'm not talking about. Did you mean comic Marvel Weekly? No, I didn't. I meant ComC. <laughs> you stupid machine. Um, right here we go. Right, so <laughs> I haven't missed out a letter. I just wanted to write ComC. Let's have a look. Marvel. Oh no, I don't have to type in ComC because I'm on ComC. Marvel. Well, I did want to say uh, for next episode, <laughs> we are going to have a surprise announcement for me about something pretty crazy so oh okay you're holding listeners, it right. so right. i'm holding that one for you so here we go so there's right so this this has actually changed there's a there's some mitch ballards on there and they're tr people are trying to pimp them out 175 dollars yeah um not not being funny but no disrespect to you mitch but the, your cards are selling for less than that in the in, on ebay at the moment um unless of course they're from sets where you didn't do many of them or they were incentives um vincenzo ricardi there's three on there from 230 dollars plus uh michael master so the majority of them seem to be around the 50 to 80 mark apart mm -hmm. from those two artists who are outliers um and let's have a look there's there's three of them on there from vincenzo mm -hmm. they're good sketches they're nice sketches they're they nice. are nice they're really nice um, i'm waiting for the spider-man 2099 because i might oh man they got Huh. So the nicest one I saw from so these are all oh. one seller by the way these ones are really high of course they are and they're of not a name I recognise from EPAC doesn't mean anything yeah it could could have a different username but they're they're interesting there it is. Um, oh that's interesting oh when you log in the prices are much lower oh yes they will be yes I'm sorry um I've, no no don't don't be sorry um I, I like I like to, I like to be sorry sometimes um <laughs> yeah they do go look that's interesting that I thought that was interesting I don't know why they do that I think uh, that's some kind of incentive not, to be oh, a member that's a nice one which one again look that's top end so contra 187 whoever that seller is is putting his out there at really really high end prices because if you look at this list of cards so this is one artist. This is uh, Ivan Rodriguez. So some sellers on there at 57. In fact, they're all this seller. So whoever this is, is, is just, yeah, they're all one seller. I think some of these people who put these sketches up on weekly, so expensive, so quickly, yeah. are those people who bought 
such a massive amount of product. Yeah, just some of them to, are going to resell. They're just they're just you know hoarding to resell and all that kind of uh, stuff. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel, how I feel about that. Uh, Nick Justice. Nick Justice it. is a good artist. Love his yeah. stuff. That's a really nice sweet Wolverine. We, we can see that on Come See. Anyway, for sure. Marvel Weekly. It's done. It's done, baby. It's done. Oh, it's done, no. baby. <laughs> so my Monday afternoons are free for the rest of the year. Now, I was going to include, I wasn't sure if it came out in 2019. Now, we, we had this debate on the group. But it wasn't really a debate. Uh, we, we talked about it a little bit on group. Um, in my opinion, in my view, if you're going to do a retrospective of 2019, it has to be the first release of the product that came out in 2019. So that's why I'm not including Marvel Masterpieces 2018. In that's this a good point. That's because a valid although point. the EPAX release was in early 2019, it came That's out why. October the 31st, 2018. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you can't include that. And I, you know, I can't include Fleer Ultra X Men 2018 because that was all out in 20, 2018, both EPAX and you know physical. So that there is a cutoff point. And no, we didn't do a 2018 review because the groups were <laughs> fairly new at that point, and we didn't have yeah. podcast. So, um, so um, if you want to do a retrospective further back go ahead um <laughs> however we won't be on this episode so 2019 right. so i can so the reason i say that is because i can't remember when deadpool came out so i'm not going to talk about deadpool just in case it came out earlier i have a feeling it might have been physical release in 2018 and epax release in 2019 but i might be wrong cardboard i might be wrong do you want to Let look it see. up I'm, I'm doing it for you, you look now it up. Really? Look at you know baby. it. Um, and the other set that that came out in um, oh, here we go. Spider Man Homecoming. I want to. I want to look up. I should have done this. We should have done this before we started recording. Really. Yeah. <laughs> They're used to it. Everyone's hey, excited to hear us. Used to hearing the stuff. sound of us typing. No, um, excuse me. <laughs> meanwhile, here is some music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, 2017 was Spider-Man Homecoming, so we're not going to talk about that. Okay, there it is. <laughs> that answers that question. Um, however, this is a perfect point, therefore. Um, no, it's not. We haven't talked about Marvel Premiere. No, we have Marvel not. Premier, about Marvel which is the Premier. other big release of 2019. Yes. So um, it kind of feels like it came and went quite quickly to me. It, it vanished, didn't it? It vanished. And I think that's because there was possibly, well, not everyone was going to go for it because it was very expensive. So very it's new sketch collectors, really, who are going to go for that. Um, I'm not sure if it's sold out everywhere. I haven't looked. But it could be that Upper Deck only released a certain physical amount out there. And are holding it for EPAC. Yeah. Um, I Maybe. know that artists are doing more sketches for the EPACs release because, um, and I think that's why we haven't seen it come on EPACs yet because they're still waiting for all that to come back. But yeah. I know there's been a second wave, if you like, of sketch cards done for the uh, <laughs> digital release of it, which will be physical cards. You just buy them on the EPACs. Yeah. Um, when that comes out, it will drive people nuts because, and I, we'll, we'll go on to talk about this when we do um, EPAC. Um, 101 part two is the perception of value of sketch cards on on the epax platform <laughs> the subjective value of yeah, yeah real world um but people will go nuts for that they will go absolutely bonkers for it um i think the base cards were lovely i think the base card um, art was lovely it's all digital um, yeah yeah, yeah. the name of the guys now so apologies um i know philippe cagno philippe, mentioned him good evening philippe before. um yeah. I know that he knows them personally um, uh, because I think they're from his neck of the woods. Um, but it was good. I, I liked the base card art. Um, I've never really been that into the Premier sets myself. Um, I did have a dabble on the first one. I've still got some base cards of that I need to um, sell at some point when I can get around to it. Um, Premier has nice. a very distinct style. It does. For sure. It does. Yeah, it um, really does. They're nice. I love they're, their inserts. I think Premiere yeah. has some of the best inserts. Yeah. They're and really that, cool. And fans. I think that's the set where they do some really creative stuff. And I think if you're buying Premiere anyway, then you can kind of probably afford to go after the more creative <laughs> inserts that are there. Um, yeah. But um, but that said, I think Premiere 
Premiere isn't personally for me. I'd, I'd quite like to have a Black Cat sketch from 2019, just so I've got Black Cat sketch from 2019. Um, yeah. I'd like an oversized one from 2017 and 2019. I love the oversized I'm, ones, yeah. the 5 by 7s I missed, I missed the only one I've seen on eBay I missed for 2017. Um, and it was an artist I'd have wanted as well. I can't remember who it was off the top of my head. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, I just had a hiccup there. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure what, to, what more to say about uh, Prem, Premiere because it's not kind of personally in my wheelhouse i guess um i you know i love the i love the premium end of the product i love the sketches i think my biggest problem when i buy if i ever chose to buy premiere would be that for me personally it's too much of a gamble yeah like it's too much of a gamble i did i am actually i was gonna make the drive i was gonna pick one up and show it to off to the group and stuff and then someone was telling me the price point and I was kind of putting it together and I was I like, think it was me. <laughs> I think it was you actually. I think we might have done it on air. Money, yeah. Mm. I was just like, I, there's nothing I'm hunting. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't mind doing it if there was a chance of a surfer. Yeah. Like that's why I did the flare. Yeah. Because they had the buybacks, which luckily I yeah. bought immediately because now buybacks for flare are ridiculously priced. Well, it depends and, on who, who, who it is. I um interestingly, I, I, I really, I, to put this on group um i did um probably the last box of it i'll do for a while actually because I, you know, I didn't really have the money for it but i did it anyway um i did another box for it um and i pulled a buyback i'll show you the buyback actually because it was yeah it was, it was bonkers it was a flare buyback and some of i've had flare buybacks sat in my account for for weeks without anyone having even a sniff of it Mm. And then I pull one particular buyback and I got loads of offers. I mean, really, really wow. offers for it as well. And I'll show you. Oh, uh, you know, the I would think so. Green versus That's... Hulk. So it's the, it's the mirroring of that, that front cover, that famous um, Hulk front cover with Wolverine with um, Hulk reflected in his claws, which is quite an issue. People go for that. So I yeah. pulled um, the, the from Flare ninety four um, the buyback of that card, and I got crazy offers. Look, I mean, this one here, I had a, I had a, I had a tier That's six. That's a good offer. You took. For it. It, 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 no, this, that was voided. Um, I didn't accept that. Oh wow! And I got three offers overnight for it. Um, oh. And so this is another one I voided. And look at what I turned down for that. I turned down a power blast. And a Spidey flare buyback. Oh, damn. Which is fine, you know. Perfectly fair. You know, I've got no skin in the game for buybacks. I've got my black cat ones. You know, I'm not, not fussed about it. I'm yeah, still yeah, trying yeah. to put together the original set, <laughs> let alone going after buybacks. So the right. one I accepted was this one. Oh, wow. And look at what he gave me. He gave me... Wow. Short, short, short. Um, what did he give me? What did he give me? Lucky Barnes short short print. Yeah, so I got a flare, uh, singularity SSP, which means I've only got one more of those SSPs to go for. Um, short print piece of flare and a short print um, Ghost Rider, with all of That's which I really needed. That's a really good deal. So he gave me. Um, he took the flare buyback. He took a, um, a Silver Age through the ages, which is, you know, probably at SP level. Something. And then new, the other yeah. stuff was just like really random stuff like a couple of base cards from Flare Ultra Spider-Man. So it's actually only really two cards plus a little bit of filler. Wow. Um, so I think that was, I think that was really, so that's the one I took. But before I t accepted that one, I sent a message to the other two saying, you know, someone's made me a better offer. Sorry. You know, um, and wow. actually I've, I've, even though tier six Flareum is still on my wish list on APAX, I've actually bailed on it for now because it's just, too Oh really? Rich. Yeah. It's just too so much. It's too rich. I, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I have one, um, and I thought it's tough enough set to put together. So I'll return to it at some point. I'll do it after all the heat's died down, or I'll just buy them and gradually put it together. But I'm not in a rush. So, wow. Yeah. So, so yeah. So um, anyway, um, so Marvel. Good pieces. Marvel, yeah, some good. So there are some really nice cards around. I keep getting this guy. I'm going to have a little moan now. This guy sent me a blank last week for this card. And I sent him a message and said, "I'm so well." A, you're sending me a blank, which is quite annoying, just generally. Right. So what I mean by that is, on Epax, for those who may not know, someone can say what card they want from you, but not offer you anything back. So it's sending a blank. 
Oh, but you get to I mean? pick whatever you want from their yeah, collection. I, well, I could do, yeah, but it's a sketch. And I, I'm now, oh, my, my, oh. my view on sketches now, A, for, for a start, it's subjective. So I don't know what I'm, I could ask for for you. And B, all the sketches I have from now on, uh, I'm just saying to people, I want a black sketch, black cat sketch in return. I think that's smart. Otherwise, you how know, are you going to fill that up? Sketches are good currency on, on APAX, and I'm forever letting sketches go for, for you know, I, I have previously let sketches go for decent, you know, base stuff. Like this guy here has sent me an offer that's about to expire. So he wants that sketch card. And he's offering me three pretty decent, including a tier six. That there's is a nice. tier six, there's a power blast, both of which are top end, and then um, an SP uh, flare matter. So they're all from Marvel Flare. But I've just simply said it's a decent offer, but I only trade sketches for sketches of the only character I collect, which is a black cat. And I've kind of had to do that because otherwise I end up with no sketches because I keep yeah. trading them for high end inserts. And sketches of black cat are kind of what I'm in there for. So I've kind of had I think to that's a smart that. idea. Actually. Yeah, I, I kind of had to because otherwise, you know, you lose now just coming along. So anyway, so let's have a quick. <laughs> we've, we've gone on a bit. So the things that came out. Oh, 2020. Let's do it. Well, I think, 20... I think, I think we're pretty much... Oh, so did you find anything else that came out that we missed? No, I was just... So everything that came out in 2019 was Marvel Premiere. Let me just find my um, list. We have Upper Deck Marvel Studios' first 10 years trading cards, which was 2019. I have nothing to say about those, I'm afraid. Neither do I. Simply because but it's MCU. The only thing I will MCU, say about yeah. them is that they did have some pretty decent sketches in, and it sold I mean, out very quickly when it went on. I think they had... Because I think they also had really good autos. Yeah. So if you are go nuts for the auto. Yeah, yeah. There's the some MCU. really good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh the Deadpool did come out in 2019. Oh, it did. It did. Okay. And then artists, uh artists, <laughs> Agents of Shield Compendium, uh trading card. That's 2019 as Completely well. Completely off my radar. So apologies right. for those who listen to this who are fans of the MCU or TV related sets. Because there were some really good uh, don't touch autographs. on Boston, but um no. Agents good of Shield autographs. Yeah. I haven't watched since season two. Not not because I don't want to. It's because the wife's not into it, and I just don't have time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. And then we got 2019 Flair, and then we got 2018, 2019 Marvel Annual. So yeah. I think so we, we actually did cover it. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. If Solid. anyone does want to come on and talk about the Deadpool set, or talk about the MCU kind of uh, cards. MCU or the Agents of Shield who did collect them and can give us kind of that that. Uh, retrospective or leave us a voicemail with a review you can do that if you want to um we'll, we'll happily put it on the episode i can kind of only get into it if i've experienced it and i've very I've, I've had very little um involvement with any of those sets the only one thing i will say i didn't realize this existed until someone <laughs> someone posted about it on the, on the group on facebook and i found that in deadpool there was a subset and um, Stephen Bagley, Bag of Fleas, Bag of Fleas. Um, who has been going after Deadpool on EPAC, yeah. um, clearly had a spare um, of this subset, so just traded it for me just because I, I quite fancied it. The only reason I fancied it is Deadpool, I don't really, uh, doesn't really, you know, the mo movie was fun, but in comics, I'm just not, not a fan of that kind of comic right. style. It was just not my thing. So that's why I didn't really go for the set. But one of the subsets was Deadpool bombing, where Deadpool bombs cards from other <laughs> upper deck sets. And I didn't realize this existed. So there, you've got the Ultron card from Marvel Masterpieces 2018. Yeah. 2016, actually. Is that 2016, 2018? I think, I can't I think it's 2018, yeah. But Deadpool's like photo bombing it. I love it. And they've, they've, they've put it over the top. Uh, and there's a similar one here from where Deadpool is bombing a <laughs> Flair Ultra X Men card. I love that. And there's a subset. So for me, I want those to go with the Fleer Ultra X-Men or the Marvel Masterpieces set. I don't want them yes. for the Deadpoolness of it. They just, because they feel, they look and feel to me like cards. I, don't, I can't remember what the backs do, actually. Do they, are the backs Deadpool focused or are they? No, they are literally the same layout as the Fleer Ultra X-Men or whatever set they're being pastiched. But just with Deadpool bombing over the top. That's so, so they're, cool. they're almost like they've done them as... I know they haven't done this because they've created these as new cards, but they look like the printed cards where Deadpool has then slapped something over them. I love that. Yeah. It's so a really cool. clever little subset. And there's a, there's a brilliant one here. Mystique. Oh, Mystique one looks good. 
<laughs> and her hey, pose, that belt. I love and that. Um, her pose that like she's just dropped the mic. So Deadpool's coming in with thumbs up, going drop the mic. <laughs> so <laughs> good, it's really funny. So, but that's where my affinity to Deadpool ends. Yeah, it's funny, but after a while it gets kind of old. Yeah, but um, I love it that they did it across so many inserts, look, though. There's a there's a Marvel yeah, premiere. Marvel premiere. That's funny. Where he's like he graffitied hair onto him. Yeah, look at that. Clever. It's fun. That was a so clever, clever so idea. What I like about it is Upper Deck taking the Mickey out of their own. Yeah. Set. Hundred percent. That's what I like. So yeah. So from that point of view, that subset works. Thumbs yeah. up from that one Upper Deck. That yep. we, that gives us the official MCC pod. Thumbs up. The totems from Marvel Flare. Thumbs down. Sorry, uh, Upper Deck. <laughs> Um, we forgive you, but we, we forgive you. <laughs> we forgive you. So let's let's jump on to 2020 because I'm aware of the fact that we've been going for a while. Uh, but um, so 2020, I'm very very excited yes. about a couple of these. I'm going to start with the ones people know about. So Spider Man Far From Home. Uh, it's an MCU release. It's coming. Uh, yep. Let me get up the release schedule from our friend Ed Webb at Sci Fi Card, um, who is just a dude. I love him. Um, he's really great. Nice guy. He's a physical dealer. Um, he's he does good stuff. Uh, and his monthly newsletter. If you don't get it, go to his website and please subscribe to it. Um, sci-fi. Uh, www. Sci-fi. Cards. Is that his website? It is now. It is now. Yeah. There we go. I think it is. It's there. Um, but Google sci-fi cards. You'll find him. Um, he's mm-hmm. the guy who does promos. Um, he's been in business twenty years. He's just, yeah, he's. A, I mean, he's yeah. a big name in the in the hobby, and he's in all the groups, and he's a really nice guy. He's, you know, really so, nice. So here we go. So Spider Man Far From Home Upper Deck, uh, physical release. Actually, that's already out according to this, December eighteenth. Well, we also have Shield Compendium. So they might, they just dropped before Christmas. That's why I, I missed that they come out. Yeah, same day. So, that's interesting. Yeah. They also have the twenty twenty Upper Deck Avengers Endgame and Captain Marvel trading cards. Yeah, so that's out in January apparently, but no date attributed to it. No um, date. And it's interesting that they've merged Endgame and Captain Marvel. Yeah, and it's MCU focused. Yeah, MCU focused. So I, I personally won't be dipping into that, but I'll keep more of an eye on it so that I can talk about it on the on the podcast. Yeah. These will be physical releases, not EPAC releases. Um, no. And here. they have diamond relic, uh, relics, they have sketches, uh, one shot metal shadow boxes, printing plates, um, a lot of different autographs as well. I wonder if they'll have a Brie Larson one. And it's four cards per pack, nine packs per Ooh. card, sixteen boxes per case. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. It's going to be. That's a tough, a tough one. one. That's a, That's a big deal. It will go bonkers though, because people will go in for it for the relics and the autos. Yeah, because they MCU. got they got a lot of people. I mean, um, but on those are two really frenzy. big. Yeah, yeah. I agree. when it comes on EPAX, it'll be a frenzy. That's where they'll sell the bulk of it. I agree. Um, then you have now. This is interesting to me. So this must be the tail end of 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 the license agreement and the fact they probably already produced them. Um, the Netflix cancelled Marvel shows, uh, The Punisher season one. Yes. So that's out in February. Physical release. Yes. 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 Um, yes. Again, we've not really talked about those Netflix series releases it's not really something that either of us go for um no we will, we're happy to talk about them more but again i'd rather someone who kind of is into those and would, would like to maybe come on yeah plus it'd be fun to come on yes. too like yeah. if you're a huge you know, collector course, we'd like to yeah. learn more about it so so feel free to but you know we're telling you that they're there they're not they're not something we we go for so much we tend to go for the comic art and original art based space sets um then that that's kind of it in terms of the stuff that is solicited and people know about. Right. So the stuff that has none of this stuff has been officially announced that we're about to go for. No one is yawning. My goodness, man. I just saw Why are you outing me, man? I'm like muting right. the mic and stuff. I don't know no, what no. the temperature's dropping over here, so I'm, it's I'm because, getting cold. Well, I'm aware that it's morning for you. You you're probably still just diving into that coffee you've got and you might not have had breakfast. So um uh, hats off <laughs> you for powering for it. Um, they sacrifice so much for you us. Do, you do. You do. Your sacrifice is duly noted. Thank you for your service. Um, so, so this has this. Everyone knows this is coming. We've mentioned it before. I don't think Upper Deck have officially announced it, but some artists are now saying that they've got the go ahead to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they are out there. And this is Marvel 80th. 
Now, Marvel 80th excites me, and the reason it excites me is because the the style of it and the sketch card style of it in particular, this is where you need to be looking at my screen now, sir. I am. Is really, really intriguing. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the Instagram of an artist called John Bruce. John uh, Bruce. His Instagram is I'm John Bruce. Uh, and his profile picture is him with <laughs> Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. Uh, so hats off to you, Snooch. Um, the, that went over your head, didn't it? You're not what, a Kevin Smith fan. No, no, no I, 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 went, I, I went Snooch. I'm, I'm a Clerks fan. <laughs> All right. Kevin Snooch Smith. is more of a, a, a J thing. Anyway. Yeah, I see. So, uh, Schnugens, the... <laughs> Someone will be a fan of that. And I just think about the donkey it. scene. Like, that's my favorite scene. Oh, like, Clark's so too. good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. uh, so you've so you've set me off now. So, so I like them because they are different. Um, in fact, that's not the one I want to show you. The one I want to show you is they have different sketch cards with different borders, Marvel 80 years, and there's a Bronze Age artist sketch card, uh -huh. Silver Age artist sketch card. There is a, um, there are other ones. And he did actually DM me with um, the, uh, bless him, he did actually send me a DM of the pictures of the uh, sketch cards, which do I have on this one? I'm logged into the wrong account. I, I think I've sent them to you, though. I think you I did. might have sent it to you. you plus, so. you can't see your messages on a desktop with... Um let me just well i can get them but i just have to be aware of and if anyone bings me uh, oh um, that's right it, it, it comes up on the audio so let's just hope no one bings me so let me go into this and i'll pull them up on screen because we are sharing we're sharing is caring all right sharing is caring sharing is caring all right it's going to be a little segue while i find these pictures um because we good grief we do chat we chat we a lot chat. we chat a lot we do it's, it's good to talk it's good I um scrolling back through scrolling back through who else uh oh yes we got some exciting voice intros coming up by the way i can't um, believe the sketch cards in marvel 80th yeah we got a lot of really they're cool just, artists they're coming just, on. yeah we have got some really I'm cool artists coming up so really excited um, to see the um, oh we haven't done the mailbag oh. do the mailbag next week we'll do the yes. mailbag next week yes 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 because that's a big one we have had our first physical piece of mail everybody so we yes. actually have a mailbag it's it's got one letter in it but we it's actually awesome. have a mailbag. We've also got a voicemail from last year that we never played, where someone's oh, asking us a question. That'd be nice. Um, which we actually do need to answer on episode because he's probably wondering why we haven't. What's going on um, there? What's going on? What's, what's going on? What's going on? Where's well, my I'm voicemail? Excited. <laughs> I'm excited about Marvel 80th because, like, it means that there's going to be inserts. There could be Surfer. Well, yeah, well, I, it, there yeah, should listen, be. Surfer. Listen, I'm already drooling. Come on, he's about to be out. He's but, got to be out of jail by now. Well, he's he just got a sideshow statue announcement, and so, you just got some pop action. I did. So yeah. I just got all that. So things are coming. I but like, pop, I'm excited for sketch card friend. variants, yeah. like the inserts, like Golden Age, yeah. Bronze Age. That's what I like about it. This is different. I, there's going to be such an oversized sketch cards. Oh, I am so excited. Uh, here we go. I wonder here what we go. The so he sent me. He sent me a photo. So. um uh, this is a size difference. Regular cards on the right. Uh, regular cards broken down into wow. gold, silver, and bronze age. Oversized could have been from any era, so long as it was an approved character. So obviously, it's still working to a character list, but look at the size of that. It's nice. It and I awesome. love the design of it. So on the oversized ones, you've got like the heads of the characters going around the congratulations you've received. That is so and cool. My Marvel art sketch card. So I will definitely be up for an oversized black cap. And I'm, I'm predicting there will be black cats in this. In fact, oh, I've yeah. seen another artist show black cat. I mean, it has to. Someone else has, has, has already gone out. So, so, so I think, as always with this, some artists have been like, are you sure? Because, you know, we, we, I haven't been told I can announce. And other artists have come on saying, I've been told I can show. So I think, I think some artists get told different things at different points. Um, but he has shown me his black cat which I'm not wow. sure I'm supposed to say, show me his black cat, but um, was I even supposed to talk about that? But anyway, it's nice. It's nice cardstock. Very nice. I really like the cardstock. I love the 80-year banner. Yeah, I do. That's there. I'm a huge fan of that. It's nice that design. So, good. so Marvel 80th, I will be going in for. I don't know whether it's... At this point, we know the sketch cards. I've got no idea what the set content will be, whether it's going to be a, a sketch-heavy set, 
more on the premier scale of things because the oversized sketch card indicates to me it could be on that wavelength i mean if it's going to be i think it will be a two things can happen either the oversized sketch card can be case breaks or an achievement or epax yeah or right or it could be oh wow that looks so good or there could be a kind of like marvel premiere box set up where you can either get like a five seven or two sketches i don't know there has to be I wonder what the price point's going to so be. I simply don't know. I simply don't know. So there's, so there's a lot we don't know about Marvel ATF. We've known it's been coming kind of unofficially for about for a while. six months now. Because um, when the sketch cards landed, one artist... So 80th was last year, then, right? It's not yeah, 20th. Yeah, 80th was last year. But then again, they're always a little bit behind. Cause yeah, but I mean, it's a lot release. of printing and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, they're only about, to release, <laughs> they're only about yeah. to release Marvel Punisher Season 1. So... And that yeah. was what, three, four years ago on Netflix. So, um, so there is there is a time delay, um, which could it explain why Endgame and Captain Marvel are being merged together. Um, could be a could be a, you know, because that was a previous phase. So there could be a, a right. different. Uh, there could be an uh, an artist contract in terms of likeness use or use of that stuff that's coming up, which means they have to snug up those releases because yeah. a lot of the artists, a lot of the characters rather, a lot of the actors would have only been contracted for those movies. And those contracts may have expired. Specifically, I'm thinking Danny Jr. Yeah, you know, so it could be something like that. I'm speculating. It could just be the it makes you know, sense Marvel though. Movie. I mean, I know the uh, autos is what sets them back usually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so there's that. Um, now, the other one that I know we're not supposed to know about, but there is a set coming out based on the television series of The Runaways. Mm, yes, um, which is an interesting one for me because it's not a Netflix series. It was on a different network. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head what, what, what it was on. Uh, side note, I did read, and I haven't watched it yet, but I did read that Cloak and Dagger has been cancelled after its second series. Um, I am looking forward to watching that. And that again, that was a different network, yeah. um, two runaways. And I think there was another um, uh, Marvel licensed series out there with another network. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. Legion? Legion was FX. Legion was yeah. great. So Legion was FX. I'm not sure who Cloak and Dagger was. I'm not sure who Runaways was. CW. Were. Yeah, I think they were different people. So uh, Runaways, I'm aware that it exists as a comic book. I know it came big in the noughties. Um, I'm not sure what the, what the gimmick is with it. Um, I know it's kind of teenagers. It's teenagers like, rebelling against superhero parents, or they're kind of coming into their own. It gets a little oh, more okay. complicated, like that as well. Oh, okay. So, like a lot of it? secrets are being uncovered. I saw the pilot because um, okay. I was interested. Um, I, I didn't watch more after that just because you know other shows came on and yeah, I got into a lot there of. There's so things. many hours in the day, and there's so many hours in the day. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't bad. Cloak and Dagger, I thought was really good at yeah. the beginning, and then it got very teeny, and then I kind of dropped off. Um, but the pilots were really good and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. it just wasn't the viewer, you know, it was on CW, yeah. I believe. So I just wasn't the audience. Okay. Um, even though I thought they did a great job introducing the characters and I thought they were really good editing, some good shots as well. So good storytelling. Just, it just became too teeny. Yeah. Okay. So Runaways is coming. Um, it's not something that I can really say much more about apart from that it's coming and it's got sketch cards. So that's all I know. Interesting. Um, and I hope they do then, something for, uh, yeah. And then the other one. <laughs> so we've speculated for a while about whether Marvel Masterpieces would be an every two year thing because the Just Go set, which was the first one for eight years at that point, came yeah. out in 2016. It was originally slated for earlier than that, but it took Joe quite a while to do the paintings. Yeah, so it takes a while. as you'll know from some of the cards, paintings have Just Go 14 on them and Just Go 15. So yeah. it was obviously taking his time and, it shows and we love you for it thanks joe um side note side trivia note here i um am lucky enough and i consider myself lucky because he could have declined um uh joe just go accepted my friend request so i i see what nice posts on um uh, facebook and i think i think he generally is quite open about about stuff so you know there's a lot of fans and there's a lot of other the other artists i see interacting with joe is is truly truly awe inspiring some of the yeah, friends that he's really cool with. um but he occasionally posts stuff that just makes my jaw absolutely drop on the floor um and he posted he he reposted something yesterday as i speak that he originally posted on the 4th of january 2016 
where he said, the main thing I've taken away from the Marvel Masterpieces cards is the realization of how much I absolutely hate drawing and painting Iron Man. <laughs> I just find that really interesting. Uh, it's, it's really interesting trivia. 50 plus different armors, and except for the Silver Age design, every one of them is a total pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm painting three Iron Man battle cards in a row, and each one has different armor, more complicated than the one before. <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny to see him say that because he's such a i yeah. guess i see his preferences usually nature yeah i know I, but the thing is i know some artists have yeah. different things you remember when we we had uh robert um duke um duke or i can't, I can't remember because we we lost the audio on it because that was the episode we never released where we did the interview with the, the canadian artist yes. UK. Yeah. um so uh good evening uh i think it was roberto actually apologies roberto, really yeah, murdering roberto. your name i'm so sorry sir as well as the episode going awol <laughs> the lost episode yeah. um i can't even remember your name properly um he <laughs> mentioned that he liked drawing characters with masks because it was <laughs> slightly quick and easy to draw when he's doing sketch yeah. yeah um so you know there were different artists who find different strengths in different areas uh joe goes on to say my appreciation for how where guys like Addy Granov, who's an amazing artist, no, yeah, he's amazing. His character off has risen tenfold. So he reposted it and said the hate stays strong. <laughs> and interestingly, <laughs> totally um someone did say in comments, and I thought this was really interesting. Um uh, bah, 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 bah. where is it someone about spidey's webs uh, that they found difficult and joe joe responded to that saying actually spidey's webs once you get the pattern of it they're really easy i can do them really quickly oh interesting he said i can do spidey's web. i can do like really, really i can't remember i don't want to misquote you joe because i know you've had um people misquote you before so um so i don't, I don't want to take the words um away on this one but i just thought it was fascinating that the so interesting how some an, things are a little insight, easier such an insight yeah um it that's really so is. cool i love it so um love that. that's awesome <laughs> so there we go so anyway that's a side quest so so we aren't sure if after 2016 2018 with simone bianchi uh good evening simone uh simone. Ciao, simone um whether they would carry on the numbering yeah and up until the 12th of December, so this is this is actually quite an old revelation now, but I immediately yeah. uh, tweeted it and posted it on our uh, Marvel Masterpieces, um, sorry, shut up in uh, <laughs> MCC pod, uh, at MCC pod. If you don't know this by now, folks, go and have a look at MCC pod, both on Facebook, both on, I'm about to say three things. Um, I need more whiskey. On Facebook, Poison. on Instagram, on Twitter, at the mcc pod yes <laughs> i'll get it right in a minute it's so good look. now so as soon as it ca as soon as it, uh, it went on there we were like ah okay so two artists you kind of know what they're talking about um two of the ratchos actually that that yeah um, that, that um dynasty of of artists said so i'm really really happy to have been accepted to do cards for marvel masterpieces 2020 so it was two different sources albeit they are related they both posted very very close to each other and they didn't say anything else about that they've been very no. tight-lipped since yeah now the posts have stayed up so i've been told to take them down you've been told no they haven't been told to take okay them down, smart smart which okay, is good, which good. is which is which is interesting so um so this is big news for me because while there's so much we don't know about this set yet it appears to confirm as much as we can at this stage right. that there will be a Marvel Masterpieces set at some point in 2020. Now, I would caveat this to say that I wouldn't be surprised if that slips into 21 because I if, would not they, if they have one or maybe two artists doing all of the painting, then um, that takes time. So yeah. chances are they did what they did with Simone and they commissioned them with enough time to do it. I think, I think they will have, yeah. I think they will have, I think also I, I'm, I, I would love to get an insight on the timetable that upper deck operates on. Cause I'm wondering if what they do up front is they're like, let's get all the base card art first and then commission sketch card artists, or if they do it all simultaneously just to kind of like stop it from people being like, it's this year and then a year pass, a year pass, a year pass. So I'm interested to see what their timetable is, mm. but I don't know. I'm saying I'm, I'm going to make the call. 
I'm going to go with October, December, October, September. It will be late in the year. For yeah. sure. It's going to be cute. Late in the year of 2020. If it's not, I'd be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of speculation. There's a real, there's a, there's a real load of speculation on this that hmm, it's going to be some of the legacy artists returning i I genuinely can't see it happening and the reason i the reason i say this is as much as you wish for it a lot of those artists have moved on now joe is potentially an exception well he has moved on he's obviously grown as an artist and he's done a variety of, of amazing work so um I did remember reading one thing that, that Joe felt that he had rushed the first set um, because, you know, he, he, he has talked about in, in yeah. it's gone in print back at the time, um, how accurate the quote was, but I think, I think the feeling is that it was rushed. So um, I'm, I'm always very careful when I talk about, about, about Joe in this way. And the reason I'm careful is because I've seen him say before that he's unhappy with being misquoted on stuff. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to pee him off. Uh, um, but I don't think Julian Boris will come back and do one because Julie is clearly doing other classical based paintings. Um, I'd be really shocked if they got them. I think it'd be very, very surprising if I, I don't know how active Boris is now, but um, I know that uh, I know that he's no spring chicken <laughs> necessarily. You know, no. he's, 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 he, he might not want that level of work because there's a, you know, it's hundred and. 120 130 140 pieces of original art that will need to be made um that's a that's that's a young person's game that's i think and i think game to do that i think the big question is do here so here's my lines right i agree with you do i think jo- julie boris or even hildebrandt is going to do a full set mm. no i no. say no. no do i think they will sign buybacks or maybe do a small insert set or do a yeah. lithogram or something that we've seen in the past, maybe, but that's even a hard maybe for me. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think we have new artists. Yeah, I'm hoping, I think they're going two ways about this. They're either going to do four artists like they did back in the day. Yeah. Right. They're going to pick a team and they're going to. It gonna won't be an artist from back in the day. That, that's no. the thing. I, I just can't be, see it happening. No. We know that Dave, is is a teacher most of the time now he has a very short window in the year to get into creative because he he talked about it um demetrius i don't think i think has moved on he's doing other things now um uh, maybe peter maybe uh, nelson i think he's doing other other things now um greg hildebrandt is happily doing his own thing and you know still still in marvel you know and still you know and and other styles but he's got his spider web art um kind of studio gallery brand and plus he'd be doing it by all of himself unfortunately yeah yeah exactly so you know and again you know that's a lot of work and it's just one of him and Mm -hmm. you know i'm sure they'll have memories of how difficult it was yeah um so i think it's going to be a team yeah i well it's there's been speculation of single artist there's been speculation of as to whether it would be fred roy he's categorically said it, it isn't him and he's still doing his other stuff in fact he's been very very humble and said he doesn't think he's up to standard and i i say to you poppycock sir uh you are incredible <laughs> I love none of that um the um who else there's been speculation of another uh, another few artists i the thing is the thing the thing that would be a telltale sign for me is if that artist had gone quiet for a period of time that's what i'm trying to find out i'm and, trying to see who's gone rogue well i thought <laughs> of someone who's who i have seen less from in Tell the me. last few months glee brothers oh. they're proactive they're incredibly talented they're easily of the quality to, to produce the base card art. Libra. Um, I, I have seen less from them in the last quarter of 2018, uh, 2019, even <laughs> what year are I in? I've got no idea. <laughs> um, I, that, that's my guess. Now I'm, you know, maybe when they hear this, they'll, they'll, they'll drop me a message saying you're talking out your bum, but that's, if I was going to put bum. money down, I would, I would probably put 
you know, I'll put, put a few bucks on it. I'm not, <laughs> not going to go cray cray, but um, <laughs> the um, so it could be them. It could be an artist who does variant covers in comic books, but I think uh, Mike Mayhew still seems to be pun- punting out stuff. Uh, I don't think it would be Alex Ross. No, there's no Alex Ross. Maybe 100%. Tex. There's no way. But mm, don't know. I don't know. I know everybody would want Gabriel these people Gabriel are very Del Oto. Yeah. I know people want o- o- Oto, another European artist. I think they should go with a woman artist, you know, vary it up a bit. Um, you know, have give us give us some range. I don't know. Um yeah. I see a team. I see a team. Yeah, I think so. It's a lot of work. I, it's a lot of work. I haven't seen anybody go super quiet. So it has to be a team and it would, it would follow the pattern, right? Mm-hmm. So if we had juice go, then we had Bianchi, maybe they'll do a callback to a team of artists and do some Could interesting be. buybacks Could be. like that might be the next logical mm-hmm. conclusion. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope it's out of the blue. I hope it's someone completely different. Yeah, I do. I am down for that. I want something fresh. I want something interesting. I'm, yeah. Let's get weird. Let's do it. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people have quorums with 1993 Marvel Masterpiece, but I like oh, 1993. It's grown, on me. it's grown on me so much. I Since like I started, it. I like it a uh, lot, actually. MMC. I love it. Since I, me, I love yeah. it. Since I started MMC, I'm just so, I'm so enamored with some of the artwork, the more I get into They're it. They're great, yeah. man. When you realize, yeah, the card design, I think, is what a lot of people have issues with because it is very dated, you know, so it's, the, the yeah. style of font. Uh, but when you look at the front Such and the back, you look at the that. artwork on that. I know. Now, you've got George Perez in that set. You've got Sienkiewicz yeah. in that set. You've got Jusko yeah. in that set. Yeah. You've got, you got Ray Bell. Largo in you that Julie set. In you've that got Julie in that set. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, the subset was X-Men 2099, which isn't everyone's cup of tea. But, you can't knock the uh, the quality of the art no, book. I think it's great. Um, I, mean, I love the range. Um, I but love I the see range. people really, really going hard at it. More so, I mean, tw- the 2008 Marvel Masterpieces sets get a lot of bad flack. Some of it, some of it justified a little bit. Yeah. But I think again, that was set design rather yeah. than the you know, and the, they obviously Honestly, existing artwork. I think I think the camps are usually that you have people who are hardcore Juice fans. Yeah. And that's all they want. Yeah which is whatever. Uh, I don't particularly agree with that at all. Um, you know, I think Bianchi was amazing. You yeah. know what I mean? At, to follow Joe's work. I thought that was a great leap. And it was, and a, it was good, a necessary in a good direction. change of style. It, was, it, was it needs to be. But yeah. that's the thing about masterpieces, right? Yeah. That style has to change because there yes. is always going to be this kind of aspect to that uh, series where yeah. – you're coming back and rediscovering them. Yeah. You know it what can't I mean? just be one thing for one set of collectors. No, 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 no. It has that's to crazy. Up always different, always new, always fresh. Yeah. Always. For me, Which that, I, that's the yeah. magic of the series. Which for me, I guess, is what they were trying to do with Flair. Yes. Which so, it, I thought that was successful. You know, I thought there were a lot of cool range there. Yeah. But in, no, in terms of the chase sets. So as much the chase as we, sets, we, yeah. we talk about, you know, they were trying to do different things. Right, that makes collectors. sense. So you know, and there are people who like the totems. So, just you know, not my personal personal bag. And right, right. I think it's cool that they're doing God, different things. Yeah. So I always want different things. I can't see them changing. Maybe I'm wrong. I think they'll keep the masterpieces format largely the same this time, but there'll be a, there'll be something that's a bit new, which will be um, very much of on the wavelength for the preliminary art cards that you talked about that, that mm-hmm. they did for which was a really nice one still not completed um chipping away at it but it's not been a priority if i wanted to i could have finished it by now it's, it's one of those things it's like the purple yeah. set for marvel masterpieces 2018 yeah if i want to, if i hadn't been focusing on marvel annual or marvel weekly i'd have done them you know? right so, i understand you know, that currently focusing on flair so um so you know it is what it is i think um it's going to be exciting Will I buy physical this time? Because I largely completed it on physical. So oh, I guess really? I, yeah, I, lar- I did. I'm, I'm, I'm old school in that way. You know, I hadn't really started on EPAX. Kind of mm, Marvel Masterpieces right, on right, EPAX right. was kind of my first thing that I tried. And it, it actually scared the heck out of me because I got swamped with offers for the trade and it really stressed me uh, for the sketch I pulled and I got yeah, really stressed right. out by it. Now I kind of, you know, I know what to expect and I'd be more prepared for it because I've used EPAX for quite a while now so yeah um but i think and i'd also hold out for what i wanted as well um 
so I think this time I will wait simply because and I know you, it's easy to say that and everyone gets caught up in it on release I'll probably buy one or two boxes physical but that'll be it that's so that I have the physical opening of the product I think I'm gonna do the same I think I'm gonna buy one or two boxes physical might shop eBay one. yeah might just be one shop eBay and then I'm thinking if the surfers in it I'm thinking of doing a case on upper deck yeah yeah if the surfers in it i can see that happening i'm gonna do it i think i'll do it i think that'll um, be the first time i do that and i think i'll wait for it to be on epac yeah. unless there's this crazy deal to get yeah. but just because i can have so much stock yeah, that i can trade yeah you know what i mean so i think that's the way i'm gonna do it. i think i'll buy like you i'll buy a physical box do yeah. a break online get the itch scratched third market everything that i need yeah. And then if I haven't gotten anything or I want to get something crazy, yeah. I might do a case. So, you know, anything one of one, I might snap up early. Uh, I won't kind of be bent over and robbed for it. It's only if... Uh... <laughs> oh, okay. It. Sorry, I've just seen something pop up on eBay that I wanted on Epax. Oh, good. Get your screen up. My screen is up. So whoever <sighs> this is... Get that. Yeah. Whoever this is, I, I was going to trade with it with someone on epac and then it, it got traded out and it disappeared and i, I was waiting it. to see where it popped up and someone's um someone's just it popped up so i'm um i might as well me, say what it is i'm really really skint at the moment and I've, <laughs> i'm aware that i've got to give you a hundred dollars in a few weeks for the um hologram thing so um you can do that whenever it doesn't matter yeah we'll see we'll see um anyway marvel masterpieces 2018 i'm literally still paying for what I spent on that. So, yeah. um, so I've kind of got to take it easy. So I think I will wait because, and I'll just, I'll just pick it up once, once everyone's done the EPAX thing and it's flooded, I'll probably just do it on EPAX, but yeah, only for the achievements. Cause last time I ended up going back to get the achievements, you know, I ended up, you know, it's what it is. and yeah. I guess that's where that kind of comes as full circle with what Apodeca, you know, trying and for a lot of collectors, it is, it is, they are now choosing to wait for EPAC to put stuff together. But I kind of want to see EPAC cool. being released earlier. Yeah. I well, really I would, think, yeah. They'll hold it because they'll want more sketches. That's what I, I don't like. I don't like the waiting period between the physical release and the EPAC release. I think it's too long right now because we're still waiting on Premiere. And I think it is nice that it dies out and then people get excited again. Like, I yeah. get it. But. I don't know. I would kind of prefer to be able to like be excited and be like, Oh, I don't have to rush, oh, that's wait for this. That's a you know? Card. So I'm just looking at this thing that's popped up on eBay. That is a nice card. And that's the one you're I, looking at right yeah, now. That's my friend of the podcast. <sighs> I think it's very, very nice. And it, you know, I like to have a black cat from every set that there's been a black cat sketch card done for if I can. That's kind of my thing at the moment. So, for example, I've got one from one of the Captain America movie sets. There's no reason for Black Cat to be on any of those sketch cards because she's nothing to do with the MCU. Yeah. But still, someone did one. It's really I've nice. I've got a Thor one. Um, I think I might have an Iron Man one somewhere. This is Black Panther. It's a Black Panther sketch card featuring Black Cat. She looks good, man. But it's nice. And I when know, you look at his 45. more recent Black Cat, yeah, I would as well. When you look at his more recent Black Cat, you can see his development. You can see his improvement, mm. which I find interesting because he's posted pictures of a black cat he's done from the Spider-Man Far From Home. I think it looks good. Yeah, I think it's it one does. of the better ones yeah, I've seen. I think I'll make an offer on that. Um, anywho, so the, the only thing I will say, uh, just to wrap up then on Marvel Masterpieces 2020, when, when we know more, we will put it on because of the time delay of, of this, these episodes going out, if we hear more, we'll put it on the um Yeah, everything Instagram will be and posted Twitter. and like shared and yeah, we'll whatever news we find them, out. Yeah, Because you know. we're on the hunt now. We're going to try to get some exclusive information. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but yeah, we need I to need get to hit up something. The guys at and see if they're willing to give us anything. Um, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll see what they're allowed to say and what they, what they can but say. But very exciting year, man. If it's MM it year, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. Like I said, the only thing that's slightly um, um, uh, just on masterpieces, just to bring it full circle, is I wouldn't be at all surprised if they do some of the product in physical and some of the product in EPAX. Like they've been doing. Like that. reserve some things. Yeah. Like they've been, like with Marvel Annual. 
yeah. and yeah. Marvel flair. I you think know, you're, you're right. going to get the base and the physical. I think they may do that. I don't know because it is it is on the premium end of the product. It's not as premier as Marvel Premier, but still. <sighs> I don't, don't know, know how people would feel about that, but I could see I could see it happening for sure. Hundred mm. so percent. We'll see. We'll see. Yep. All right, buddy. Welcome back. Twenty twenty. <laughs> Well, so we stuff coming up. Um, well, try and keep these weeklies, folks. Um, it's difficult because we both work <laughs> for a living. Yeah. You know, this is a side quest of, of major proportion. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty safe to say. Um, it is, you know, it does take hours out of our day to do. Um, yeah. And um, there is one thing I want to talk about this episode that I'm going to hold for next week. And it's perfect related, but I'll hold that for next week. Um, and we have got some interviews we need to line up. We just need to actually sit. I keep saying this. And it's probably me as much as it is you. Um, I, we need to actually sit down with a calendar and actually <laughs> map it in. Yeah. Yeah. I say we do that soon. Um, because you're going to get busy again soon, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, we can talk. Just we can just talk tomorrow and yeah. figure this out. Let's figure this going. out. Let's get the calendar yeah. going because I know my my schedule. I can also do more evening bathroom recordings if needs be. <gasps> I love the intimacy. I know. I know. It's not the most <laughs> ideal space for me to sit and do a podcast. No, no, I can but do. It does this allow time. me to record evenings UK time. We're solid. So you know, and uh, yeah, that's enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everybody thank Thanks you for everyone listening. and, and um, enjoy collecting boom mic drop done 2020 here we come thanks for listening to the marvel card collectors podcast you can subscribe via our home on anchor.fm forward slash mccp leave us a message via that link with questions comments or just to say hi and we may even play on the show we're also on itunes spotify and all major podcast platforms our podcast is at the MCC Pod on Facebook and Twitter. And you can find links on our Facebook page to the two groups MCCW, Marvel Card Collectors Worldwide, and MMC, Marvel Masterpieces Collectors. On Instagram, find us at MM Collectors and at Sketch Card Hive. The great music we use is called Rocket Power by Kevin McLeod. Thanks to the collectors, artists, and creators who support the Marvel Cards Fan Collective. We'll see you next time, and remember, it's a small hobby but a fun one. Make mine marvel and enjoy collecting.